Hi everyone, I'm Autumn Beckman and welcome to Vlogmas Day 15! Well, I was about to say the dogs aren't in here so I finally get to sit in my own chair but then Paul just let them in. Baron, get out of my stuff, please. Thank you. So pretty soon they'll be jumping on me and pushing me out of the way. Secret Santa at work yesterday. I told you I got root beer. Now here's the proof one is missing because I drank it today. Today's gift. I hope I'm in focus. I've noticed my camera keeps going in and out of focus. We'll talk cameras in just a second. Today's gift is this reindeer. It's an ornament and it has the label on it so I can tell it's from Target. Very pretty, and it's going to be added to the decor back here in just a minute. I did a very quick camera comparison yesterday of my old camera, vlogging camera, the Canon G7X, and my new camera, the Canon M50, and I wanna show you the full setup just very quickly. Look at this thing, this is all of it, so the camera, I have one lens on it, I have the light, that should help, although I haven't charged the light yet, so I still can't use it. And I have this handheld tripod, which is not very useful at all as a tripod. This is all it does. It doesn't extend or adjust anywhere else. But what it does do is it has this place on the front to attach this remote. And what that's gonna do is allow me to hold the camera away from me and with one hand start recording or stop recording or hopefully zoom in and out. I still haven't even turned this camera on yet. So I don't know if I have to zoom with the lens, which would mean I need two hands like this or if I can just use a button or I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. But that is gonna be a great setup for vlogging, even though I'm gonna need a tote bag instead of just my pocket to carry it. I showed you guys in the first couple vlogmases the Dipti candle where I got the lantern to put on top of it. Well, when I went into the store, I was actually looking to get this, and then I saw the lantern, which I didn't know existed, so I bought that because I thought it was really pretty. But I went back and I got what I originally went for because I kept thinking about it. And it kind of bothered me that the lantern spun so fast. It was kind of dizzying. It wasn't like relaxing to look at. I still have it, I'm keeping it. Apparently, when you buy something from Diptyque and you want to return it, you can't. They only do store credit or exchanges. That's what my receipt says. So might want to think about getting Diptyque elsewhere that does do returns and exchanges. But it's a carousel instead of a lantern. So let me unbox this. They have two carousel sets available for sale this year. One, hey, one is the one I got that has two 70 gram candles. Those are the smaller ones. And then the other is a larger carousel that has the bigger candle and just one candle. So I'm gonna take this candle out. I got, I went to grab the bigger candle with the lantern so you could see a size comparison with the candles here. I don't know how many ounces the big one is, but the 70 is quite a bit smaller. So with this candle, you put the base on it and then you put this on top and that's the fan blade that spins. Can you see that? And then it comes with this little envelope inside of which is a little packet of five metal ornaments. In every other fan blade, there's a little hole on the end and you hang an ornament. It'll balance out when they're all on there, but you hang an ornament from the fan like that. And once they're all on, it looks like this. And then when you light the candle, it will spin and you have all the ornaments spinning. And I think that's so pretty. I feel like mine is a little off balance. Like the fan blades aren't all quite properly turned, but I don't know. I'm gonna see how this does. Hello, Baron. And then the only other thing I have to talk about today, we will get to some footage in a minute, however, is I've been watching the documentary on Netflix about Harry and Meghan. Have any of you been watching it? I just finished episode three, and normally I don't care at all about the royal family and Britain. Why would I? The only reason I have any interest in this is because of Meghan Markle. We used to watch Suits, of course she was in that. So it's interesting to see someone you're familiar with be in that situation and what she's been dealing with, what they've been dealing with. And so far the thing that has really struck me the most and been the most unusual thing to me is that they're focusing so much on the tabloid press and the things being said about them in the tabloid press and I don't really understand why they care. I understand why they care about the press following them everywhere and basically stalking them. I understand that they would be concerned about racism that's coming up 
and speaking up against that. But that's not all they're doing. It's more like, you know, all these lies have been said about us in the press and we're here to tell our side of the story. And I feel like, why? We don't need to know your side of the story because we don't know you. you know, the only people who really need to know that are the people in your personal lives. Who cares what the tabloids say? They do what they do. And it's like what we were talking about the other day about people leaving mean comments on the internet. Those people are going to do that. And that negativity is on them. It's not on you. You can't control it and there's nothing you can do to stop it. It's one thing if you're educating people, like take the racist comments, use that to educate people on racism. But to say, you know, oh, they're mean to me and they lied about whatever else that doesn't really matter. Who cares? That's how I feel. What do you guys think? And I'm not to the part yet where I assume this is coming. I don't know. I, I assume they'll be talking about why they left the family and are now living in California instead of in England. And certainly it has a lot to do with that press, but I would expect there are some family issues as well. I see a lot of parallels, you know, even before watching any of this, I see a lot of parallels with Meghan and with Princess Diana and how they've been treated and what their experience has been like in the family and what they they bring to the family and to the public image of the monarchy. A more casual vibe, a more personable vibe, more caring, less stuffy, things like that. And of course a lot of social activism. And those are all great things. And I think, you know, not knowing much of anything about the situation, my guess would be that they both saw parallels between what was happening to her and what was happening to Princess Diana, made a very wise decision to leave the situation because there really was no stopping it. There's no stopping the press following them, stalking them like they do. Anyway, what do you guys think about all that? What do you think about the documentary so far? And what else are you watching that's good? We're always looking for good things. I tend to like dark humor and dark drama, and like dark things. I, I don't tend to watch happy shows or comedies or anything like that. I like the stuff that makes you think or that makes you feel disturbed. Well, what you're going to see next is a bit of a long segment, but if you wait till the end of that segment, it'll be worth it, I promise you. There is a wonderful bit right at the end, and I'll just leave you in suspense as this next part rolls in. Paul and I are about to sit down here, open this Universal Yums box, and try all the international holiday treats inside but that's if we can get to it before Baron does. Baron what are you doing? What's your plan man? Interesting plan Baron. Hello Roxy. How are you? Baron you are a big goof. A big goof. Are you gonna be up there while we're tasting things? Hello again Roxy. You're so sweet and beautiful. Look at this dog. The nerve. Paul is here. Hello everyone. We are doing a tasting today from this Universal Yums box. We did a tasting from this last Vlogmas, and I don't remember what country it was, do you? Oh, it was one oh, of those countries. It was England, I think. Because, oh, that one. Yeah, I think we got some English treats. Hello, Gwenny. This year when I was looking at the Universal Yums boxes, they had a lot of options. So this is a subscription box that you can do month to month, or three months at a time, or six months, or whatever you choose to do. And they have different size boxes, I think three different sizes that are different prices. I got the biggest, of course, most expensive box because it has a drink in it and I wanted the most variety. They also had a few different boxes to choose from. Usually month to month it's a different country each month, but this box is special because it is all holiday treats from around the world. I'm curious to see what's in here and I'm excited to try it. How about you? I'm curious too because I want to know whether I can enjoy all these foods from around the world. Let's get into this box. I'm going to open this right in front of your face, Paul. We've got this piece of paper here. Oh look, I didn't even notice this. It's some people sitting around their holiday table with a Universal Yums box. And look down here, there's a wiener dog on the floor. Did you notice that? No, I didn't. It also has this card, which tells us that one of the treats they had intended on putting in the box this year was not delivered on time, so it came with this instead, a pomegranate jelly candy. So we'll get to that. Can't wait. There are also stickers, and we have this booklet, and inside it has lots of different things, and it has all the foods listed and tells you about the foods. Paul, the box is on your side of the table, so you get the honor of selecting the snacks. Cheers everyone. Sparkling water. We're gonna start at the top and work our way to the bottom which might take a while because the bottom is way down there. Yeah there's a lot in here. First thing we have is Torres Selecta potato chips. Sparkling wine flavored. Ooh. Oh yes. See if we get a fizz out of it. Oh. This is always the part where I embarrass myself. I try to open it and it goes everywhere. Mm -hmm. But there's a little tear tab. There is. Oh, I didn't realize we were opening that much. 
Because we are not eating the entire bag right now. We're each taking like one chip. You got to explain that to me. Oh Lord, I thought that would be obvious that we're not eating the entire box right now. Have you met me? This is a tasting. Well, I'm going to taste. Okay, <clears throat> I'm trying to find the thing in the booklet because I, I was told to remember that. Should I wait? Kava flavored potato chips. Bubbly chips that taste like sparkling wine. There's a whole paragraph that I won't read. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Mm-hmm. It tastes like that. It really does. Mm-hmm. It has a brute <clears throat> flavor to it. I could eat that with some bubbly. To me, it tastes slightly like beer, too. Don't eat them mm. all at once. We have a whole box. <laughs> I, I, I had two. <laughs> you had two, and you were reaching for a third, <laughs> so I stopped you. This may get ugly, folks. Next one is popcorn. Oh, this is weird. Salted egg yolk. Popcorn. Salted egg yolk popcorn. Where is this from? Roseland, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here. That's a foreign country. The kava chips are from Spain. Ah, Taiwan. Taiwan? Taiwan, here it is. Egg yolk popcorn, yeah, Taiwan. That would make sense. Okay, are you going to open it? From Taiwan, by, from Taiwan by way of New Jersey. I'm ready to open it because I'm going to get... Yeah. Yelled at? Yes. Look, just, yeah, just tear a little bit. Tear enough for us to get a piece out. Don't tear it down the whole side. Why don't you open these? Because <laughs> I said it's going to get ugly. There's no way to open something like this in a pretty way. How, how big are your fingers that you need an opening that big? <laughs> Maybe we should just let Vincent open these packages. Okay, it smells all right. Um, interesting. You know, sometimes I'll, I'll taste something like a wine or something and I'll tell Autumn, I'm not real crazy about it right now, but I think I could get used to it if I had more. And that's the way I feel about this. There's something about it that's really foreign to me, but I can see that's promise. What do you I, think? I think it tastes really good. I don't think it tastes like egg yolk, mm -hmm. which is what I was afraid of. It tastes like a flavored popcorn. Mm -hmm. It's a little toasty. There is some salt to it, but it's not overpowering. Hard to define. Yeah, it's a little hard to describe. You know what it kind of tastes like is, what's that stuff? It's this flavoring that people use, especially if you're vegan, to make things taste like cheese but without using cheese. It's like a powdered thing. There's also a liquid thing, and I can't remember what it's called. Not being a vegan, I, I really don't know. It's not only vegans that eat it. Mm -hmm. I've had it before. What are we gonna have next? More Paul? chips, of course. Hobzavoy, Hobzavi, potato chips, spicy mustard. These are from the Czech Republic. This is clever. Potato chips, and it says made from potatoes. Good to know. <laughs> Well, that's good because a lot of potato chips are made from junk that isn't potatoes. So that's what those look like. I'm not tasting mustard. You know, I like a lot of mustard, not types of mustard, and I, and I love mustard, but I'm just not getting that with this. I'm getting um, mustard. Her palate is a lot more sophisticated than mine. That's true. Not crazy about it. Sounds Sorry. Right. Pan tosto. Looks like it. Pan tosto. Bruschettas of some kind. Tomato and oregano bruschetta bites. Let me guess. These are from Italy. Well, this one, it has a zipper inside, so you have to take this mm -hmm. off the top, and then it has a zipper to Those close it. Those I can it. work with. Some of these are broken into pieces. Okay, look. They're they're round little pizza things like this. Who's got it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what the bag looks like. But some of these are broken into pieces, and I don't want a whole one because those are pretty big. So here's the question, folks. If this one thing is a bruschetta, and we're talking about Italy here, then are several of these called bruschetti? Here we go. Not much to it. A lot of nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the flavor isn't that great to me. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking for tomato and cheese and things, and I'm, no. It's mostly a little pizza of toast. It has a nice texture. It's not so crunchy where it's going to scratch up your mouth, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have enough toppings. I definitely taste the tomato on it. It's just not enough um, to it. What are we have next? Cinnamon cookies from... The Netherlands. The Netherlands. Ooh. They're frosted cinnamon stars. Really look good. We got them open. They've put a sticker over... The packaging so you can't really see it this is what it looks like and on the back it's frosted a little bit ready oh my goodness oh hello that's nice i'm liking these first of all because they're sweet we should have just broken one in half and shared it i, I don't know. want a whole cookie I'm gonna get another bite this is good mm -hmm. yeah they're good they taste like mm. a light cookie that's been dusted in cinnamon sugar with frosting on the back which is just what they are a dutch treat let's go with a greek soft Nougat bar, yogurt nougat. 
That must be from Greece. Yes. Oh, it's a wafer. Yeah, how interesting. I have to bring this closer. There's the packaging, and then there's the cookie. It's got nougat with pistachios, and then it's a wafer around the edges. Oh, it's so light. Mm -hmm. See, I'm thinking it would be crunchy because it's, it's the way it's shaped and looks corrugated. Mm -hmm. And I was expecting crunch, pieces flying everywhere, but it's soft and it's delicious. We could eat a dozen of those. Mm -hmm. It's not really my thing. For me, I'm not getting much flavor <clears throat> from it. I'm not either, but I just like the texture and, you know, it's sweet. I have this sweet tooth, I have to admit. I fight it all the time. Okay. And I would say it's lightly sweet, not <clears throat> overly. Pretty good. I'm, I'm pleased with that. Moving right along, we have something tiny. Truffies and company? Truff, uh, yeah. Truffies? They're truffles, they're chocolate truffles. From France, I believe. These are chocolate hazelnut truffles. It's not Christmas in Provence without these. I would say we know what these taste like. So let's save them to the end because they're a nice little dessert. Okay, there's several of them. Yeah, they gave us four that I see. Well, this this looks interesting. Mm -hmm. It's quite heavy. Gosh, I'm not even, I won't even attempt that. What on earth is this? Let's find I'm it in stumped. the book. <laughs> well, this doesn't help much. <laughs> Jules must. What is that? And butterscotch gummies. They're from Sweden. And it says a toast to Sweden's favorite drink. So what is their favorite drink? Julmust. J-U-L-M-U-S-T. I've never heard of it. It's a soft drink that became popular in the 20s when there was talk of a possible countrywide alcohol ban. And this caught on as an alcohol substitute. And now 45 million liters are consumed every December alone. It says it's a root beer-like flavor. Mm, and you would like that then. I like root beer. Okay. And they're shaped like skulls because they're to die for. Oh that's, my gosh. That's what it says. They are skull shaped. So here's the bag. This is the most odd treat we've opened so far. Mm -hmm. And they're soft and you can bend and squishy them. because they're gummies. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's the butterscotch and this is the drink, the Jewel Must. Here we go. Trying the brown one first. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, oh, very chewy. I can't decide if I like it or not. I'm going to try the other flavored one. I'm still chewing the first one. The flavor's mm. not very strong and I'm not sure how to describe it. It has a sweetness. It doesn't taste like root beer. Mm -mm. And the pink one. Yeah, that's a different flavor. That one tastes more like bubble gum. So what do you think, Autumn? I mean, I wouldn't buy them. I wouldn't either. And they're a lot of work. My jaws would get tired if I had to eat a half a dozen mm. of those. This says on the back, Jewel Must Raspberry and Butterscotch flavor. And you're the raspberry nut. Do you taste raspberry? It didn't taste like raspberry to me. More names that I can't pronounce. I have no idea how to say that. This look, looks, it's Greek to me, ha those, ha ha. Those aren't the American alphabet. Oh, those are the the ones that are on the card. Where'd it go? Those are pomegranate jelly candies. Greece. I wasn't kidding when I said this is Greek to me. Yeah, Greece. I'm gonna let you open this because it's one of those. Nothing says Happy New Year like getting covered in pomegranate juice. At least that's the case in Greece, where families smash pomegranates against their doors to ring in the new year. <laughs> well, now I know what we're going to do this new year. We're Gallons gonna, of pomegranate juice. We're going to fly to uh, Alabama <laughs> mm -hmm. and throw pomegranates at Yota's house. Right. And run. Just the corner now. I only did the corner. That way, when I pick the package up, everything doesn't just fall out. There's the bag. There's the candy. This is jelly candy, and it really feels like that. It's like a Turkish delight. It's that kind of texture. Mm -hmm. But with no nuts. And it's coated in sugar. Softer than I expected. That's nice. After that last thing, I was expecting something really chewy. These are nice. Mm -hmm. Kind of refreshing. It's a lot like those jelly oranges that are coated in sugar, mm -hmm. except it's pomegranate flavored. I could eat a few dozen of these at a sitting. Gosh, I I'm seeing something chocolate down there. I'm kind of holding it for last. Okay. <laughs> Grandma's Apple Pie Cookie Bites. Okay. And I'm going to guess this is from, it's from the Netherlands again. It is. Wow. He's correct. Oh, they're tiny. They're itty bitty. Goodness gracious, look at that. You know, it's really small. Very crunchy. They do they, taste apple-y. They, they taste like the crust of an apple pie. Here's another Truffies, Truffies, mm -hmm. Popcorn and Company. This was in the box last year. Popcorn truffles. And those are from France. I remember really liking these. It's a combination of chocolate truffles and popcorn, which sounds like it wouldn't be a good combination, but it is. Cheers. Mmm. 
Those are so good. It's like it has little pieces of popcorn that are crunchy inside of it. I don't think they're the kernels, but they're about like that size, but they're not that hard. And then this outside coating. I had to move those away from him. Mm-hmm. It's already in a second one. Goodness. Oh, good. We need to find some of those here somewhere. We have La Condito Conditona Linzer Cake. Alpine Linzer Cake. Switzerland, maybe? <clears throat> Yes, it is Switzerland. Okay. Good for you. Mini raspberry Linzer cake based on a 500-year-old recipe, but made recently. Fingers crossed. There's only one of these here, so we're going to have to somehow split it, share it, break it, it in half. It says you're about to try the oldest cake in the world. Well, not, spe not specifically the one you're holding, but the recipe is ancient. <laughs> the original Linzer cake was made in Linz, Austria, Linz, Austria, but nowadays it's a popular holiday treat in Ooh. Switzerland where this mini version is made. Try just take a in. bite then and I'll okay. take another bite. Oh, look. Inside, it's delicious. Is it delicious outside as well? Mm-hmm. So there it is. It has this raspberry filling. That reminds me of something I used to have as a kid, and I can't remember what it was. It's probably not made anymore, but that's that's really tasty. It's a nice combination, the outside and then, and then the filling. I found that crust a little dry and <clears> maybe a little too, a little too crunchy because of the dryness. So I wonder if the fresh ones that aren't pre-packaged and mass-produced like that mm -hmm. have a softer cake. Yeah, I don't know what they may have put in this to reserve it. Like mm -hmm. you say, it could have dried it out a little bit. Hello, Roxy. Desperately trying to get up here. <laughs> Can you blame her? Look at, look at her. She's surveying She's, everything. Where will I strike first? At one. Good girl. We got one for Bear. One for Bear, wherever he went. He's under my chair, I think. Okay, there he is. is. There you go, Bear. Good boy. All right, what's next? Well, next, we have strawberry trifle. That sounds British. It's from the United Kingdom. Staple of British Christmas. Strawberry trifle flavored bonbons. That's such an English word, trifle. Uh, I've always, all my life I've heard that word and it's always spoken by me. It's oh. not a word we use here in the States. That reminds me, I was going to say something a minute ago about these weird gummies mm -hmm. that I have seen Cassie Thorpe. You know, she's from England. She's living in New York right now. Yeah. You know Cassie. Yes. And her mom sends her these care packages, and they have packages like this of little pink pig gummies. And she just raves about them like they're this big thing, but you can't get them here, I guess. So if anybody in England wants to send me some, we could try those. That's right. And see if they're as good as Cassie says. And I'm talking specifically to Gwenny. I'm not asking subscribers to send those. <laughs> Roxy's back here. Roxy's She's got her head. the table over in a moment. <laughs> She's got her, her nose is right here. Okay, strawberry trifle. Another tiny little thing. Mm-hmm. They're chewy. They have a very light dusting of sugar on the outside. Mm -hmm. They're that kind of chewy that's a little hard, but then it gets softer. I'm still searching for the strawberry. Really? Yeah, again, you Do know. Do you have COVID? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I was expecting to just get bam with strawberry, to just get hit with it, but hit me right it's away. All texture and I don't know what to say. I, I probably wouldn't buy these. Let's do this lychee juice <clears throat> with nata de coco. Lychee drink with coconut jelly. This is from Thailand. A beverage fit for the spirits. I'm gonna shake it. I don't know why, but just it's a good good idea to shake it. Little sip. There'll be things floating in it. <laughs> I saw that when he was drinking it. And then I saw it go into his mouth. I was wondering what the reaction would be. Did I just swallow a bunch of aliens? Are they going to bust out of my chest? Why? <laughs> it's very light, like a rose scent. This is a drink that you drink and chew. Yeah, that's a little weird. I'm not a fan of the... Uh, the tea with the, what's the stuff in it? Tea leaves? No, you know the tea with the little bubbles at the bottom? The, it's like, what's it called? You got me, Beckman. There's a tea place right next door to our building that sells this stuff. It's it's called bubble tea, but the stuff on the bottom, sometimes it's tapioca, but then other times it's these other balls. I've never heard of that. You've never heard of that? I don't know what you're talking about. You need to get out more. I don't hang around places like that. I would strain that and drink it. Mm-hmm. I just don't like the texture in it. And then maybe give the lychee to the 
the kids downstairs here? It says 20% lychee juice with nata de coco, which is That's the, the coconut jelly. Strangest thing we tried today. Here we have some baklava. Baklava. Okay. And uh, is it baklava or baklava? I think it's baklava. Okay. Assorted baklava from... Where's baklava usually from, Paul? Well, I want to, I want to see specifically, though. Yeah, Roseland, New Jersey. I knew it. I would have guessed Greece, but this says Jordan. Jordan, mm -hmm. There's a thing over there, my little green cutty thing. Is it not there? This? Oh, it's right here. Yeah, baklava I've always associated with Greece, but oh, this is more universal than just Greece, right? But come on, nobody doesn't like baklava. I love baklava if it's fresh. I've never had a baklava that's pre-packaged like this that I've liked. And I think this was in last year's box as well, mm -hmm. or some kind of baklava. Why don't you pick one? So I'm skeptical. Let me show the people, because there are three different kinds in here. Mm -hmm. There's the lid, and then it has these three different ones. <clears throat> You're taking over my job with I the am booklet? I doing my best. Oh, sure. Get the big one. No, I'm not getting the big one. I'm scooting the big one over. I think oh, you just that didn't broke work. It. Yeah, I did break it. Oh, I'm gonna have to teach you how to handle baklava. Yeah, see, that's not good. It's like a little log. Mm. Very dry. Too syrupy. I'd be disappointed if I didn't know already that it was gonna be disappointing. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what I've been scoping the whole time. It looks like chocolate, so it got my attention. Domino's gingerbread fruit filling and Percy Pan coated in dark chocolate. It's pretty complex. It's because it's from Germany. Well, of course. I've we, been engineered. We are complex people, the Germans. <laughs> Should we be drinking a Riesling with this? Wow, that's some strong dark chocolate smell coming out of there. Probably. I don't think we have any Riesling. We may. Here goes the chocolate cube. Oh, it's off. That's not for me. I should show the people what it looks like inside. Uh, it's the fruit filling that's kind of overwhelming to me. Uh-huh. It has some kind of jelly thing on top, and then the fruit filling, and then a cookie coated in the dark chocolate and robed in the dark chocolate. Don't eat it out of my hand, Roxy. It's not for you. Yeah, it tastes like licorice to me. That's what I don't like. But here's what's funny. She'll wake up one morning and find that these are all gone, and I'll deny any knowledge of it. He'll blame it on Baron. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm kind of liking those. You like them good. Hello, Roxy. Hello, Roxy. All right, we're down to our four to a piece. Our little um, truffles. Chocolate and hazelnut. And it's the same brand as the popcorn truffles. Yes. Oh, yes. I could eat these all day. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, good. And this is the kind of chocolate I was talking to you guys about recently when I was at the French market. It's like a powdered semi-sweet chocolate on the outside. Where it's not like American chocolate, which isn't real chocolate. This is real chocolate. It's the kind of chocolate that melts in your mouth and melts in your fingers. Like if you take a bite of it and then you're holding the other half while you're chewing, it's going to melt and fall out of your fingers. It's so good. And the mm. hazelnut in there. We had something like that last night when we went shopping. Right. It was a different brand, but they look the same. That was the raspberry one at the French market. Yeah. So the box is empty now. We've tasted everything. Let's lay things out on the table a bit so we can see it all. So of all the things that we've had, if you had access to any of this stuff, what would you buy? I would buy these. The chocolates, the, of course. The, the truffles. chocolate truffles. I immediately started liking these. I would probably buy these. The German treats. I would. So for me, the obvious thing is the truffles. Those are Oh, clearly yes. the best thing in the box. And then the only other things I would even consider buying are the sparkling wine potato chips and then maybe the mustard chips. Thing is, I don't really buy potato chips. And this is typical because we usually don't mm -hmm. like the same things. Some, mm -hmm. Something I like, she won't, and vice versa. So you can see here that there, with a couple of exceptions, you know, she goes for the potato chips and I go for the chocolate sweet stuff. Mm -hmm. So All right, well, that's it. And if we ask Roxy... What would you buy first? Her answer would be yes. Well, thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for having me join you. Yes. I'm so glad for you to see me. I'm glad that you got to taste international holiday treats. Now I'm going to go have some German wine. That sounds great. You yes. can pour me some too while I keep filming other things. Would you like a trocken beer in Auslese? Sure. I'll try to find one. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. You'll see me again in just a second. Hello, Baron. Can I help you? All right, I'm trying out the new camera. It looks like we're recording. So, the exposure looks good. I think we're in focus. Let's light these candles up. Well, that's not gonna work. Oh. 
and see how they do. I know the lantern, it was spinning so fast it created enough wind last time to blow out the candle. That was after, I don't know, maybe two hours. The carousel's already spinning, it doesn't look pretty, and it's going nice and slow. I like it like that. Maybe a little bit faster would be nice. The lantern isn't spinning at all yet. I don't know how long it took last time because I lit it and left the room and then came back and it was going full blast. All right, let's do the advent calendars and then we'll look at the candles again, see how they're doing. Okay, I'm hand holding this with the tripod. I feel like it's a little unsteady because it's so heavy, it's like top heavy, especially with that light on it, which isn't even on right now because I haven't charged it. Oh, my arm is gonna get tired fast. Okay, chocolate. I found day 15 right there. And today we're remembering to see if the package color matches the door color. And it does not. This one is milk chocolate. Yum. Not gonna taste that. Already have a pretty good idea what milk chocolate tastes like. And 15, don't worry. Oh, I already got chocolate on my fingers. I was gonna say, don't worry, we'll get the stabby knife out in a minute. Let's bring it over to the table. That's easiest. Still no spinning from the lantern, but the carousel seems to be going faster. Yesterday it was so blurry when I looked at the footage. So there's the chocolate rock, so you cannot have this. This camera's focusing on things a lot faster. There's the inside. Jewelry calendar, day three. What have we got? Okay, here is the little package, the, what's it called, dust bag. Oh, interesting, we have more earrings. I know that there are things in this advent calendar besides earrings. This is one of the items that was in the preview photograph for this advent calendar that showed a few of the best things. It showed about half of what was in the calendar. I found what I could find of those items on the website and added up how much they were and figured out. I know I won't like everything in the calendar, but of the things I do like, would it be worth the $400 that this cost? And I felt like it would be. These are some of the earrings that, again, not things I would wear. These are silk organza with beads in the center. Jill Maurer was telling me that next year I probably shouldn't do a chocolate calendar because I'm not really eating the chocolate. I think she's right. And a subscriber was saying that I should maybe get a beauty calendar because Dawn of Dawn Loves Couture, I will link her channel below, she's doing Vlogmas and she has a beauty calendar that she's been happy with. And this camera's focusing a lot faster, that's so nice. So that's how the earrings look there and those just aren't my thing. Pink isn't my color. And Jill had mentioned that I really enjoyed that wine calendar that I did a few years ago and I did except that it was so difficult to drink it. I don't usually drink wine every day, I really only drink it a couple times a month sometimes not that much. What I really want to do, as I've mentioned, is get a good whiskey and or bourbon calendar and do that. My difficulty in finding advent calendars that I'm excited about is one of the reasons that I usually do a do-it-yourself advent calendar, so I should probably incorporate that again next year. I just felt like I had so many calendars it was getting too much and taking too much time, so I tried to cut back this year, and I did, and this is how it's going. Guys, are you ready for cookies? You're ready for cookies? Okay, let's get cookies. All right, still nothing with the lantern, and now the carousel looks like it's about to stop moving. It's slowed down quite a bit. Oh, yep, yeah, there it goes. We caught it coming to a complete stop, just about. What is going on? Oh, now it's going again. Who knows? I am confused. Should I start this one spinning? Okay, and now it's going. And that's about how fast it was going the other day. No, I think it may have been even going faster. And I got a couple of those as gifts for other people, so I hope they work for them and they're not disappointed. If nothing else, you get some really nice candles out of it. It's doggy cookie time. Come on guys, get back on the chair. It's so much nicer when you're on the chair instead of down on the floor. It looks better for Vlogmas when you're in the chair. Okay, we're looking for door 15. It's right here. Breaking these things open and not having a Roxy there, it's disappointing. They're like, we don't have to go to the cookies. We know the cookies will come to us. Also, shout out to Gwenny of Styled by Gwenny. I will also have her channel linked below. I think as I'm filming this, she's in the process of moving. Very best wishes to you and the lion and the kitties. All right. Four cookies here, but only two doggies. Which one will survive? That was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Hey, this is like nature show here. Come on. It's like the shark week. Come on. You're not jumping for the second one? Roxy's moving closer to it. Come on. 
Come on. Get it, bear. Oh. Did you see that? I almost died. And there's our sign from Eva, Fuchsia Floyd. It looks really lovely here. It's perfect for this. We got Vincent's box, number 15. Her 14 is still up there on top, too. Here's 15. Hello, Swingy Bird. Sure is dark in here. There's your box 15 and your box 14. Are you coming out to see us? Yeah, this camera's having trouble focusing on her too. She moves too much. Vincent, you move too much. Hello, Vincent. Hello. Yes, you get head scratches. Good bird. Here, Paul, you can have a chocolate too. You caught me in my boudoir. And we come back in and they're not moving at all. This is disappointing because these things are very expensive. This one was 90, not including a candle. This one with the two candles is 150. One of you, was it Daniel? Mentioned that you had a carousel and it didn't work for you properly either. Well, at least they're pretty even if they're not moving and the candles smell good. I think with the color scheme of the reindeer, it probably looks best over here too. How about like that? That works for now. 